Hey, praise the Lord, FTC family. This is Brother Fabian Gomez. Uh, we're back with another podcast episode. We hope that you've been enjoying uh, these episodes, all all the, the saints of God who volunteer to be on the show. Uh, we're thankful for them, and we're thankful for you uh, as uh, listeners and watchers of the show. And so uh, with that, today we have Brother Abel. Uh, he has volunteered to be on the show today, so we're grateful and thankful to have uh, Brother Abel. We love and appreciate him. So with that, Brother Abel, welcome to the podcast show. Uh, thank you, Brother Fabian. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm, I'm glad that you gave me the opportunity, you know, asked me to come and, you know, be able to s just speak. <laughs> Amen. You know, no, we're, we're the ones that are just great, thankful and grateful that, that you're on. And, you know, FTC is a, a great church. We're a part of a great church. And uh, we're just blessed with great, you know, great leadership, our pastor and sister Parks, elders, sister elder Parks, love and appreciate them and the saints of God. And, and, you know, we, we think of the purpose behind this podcast, we call it a ministry central FTC ministry central podcast. And so what we're doing is focusing uh, on the ministries here at FTC, focusing on the people, the saints of God and how God is using them. And so uh, uh, when I look at you, brother Abel, I know God is brought you from a mighty long way as as he has with all of us and and you have an amazing testimony and god's using you in so many different areas and many different capacities here at the church and uh, before we get to that uh for those who have may may ha may not have heard your testimony before uh, why don't we just start really quick and maybe going back to the time where god saved you where he found you mm -hmm. um so for for those of you guys that haven't necessarily um I'm just going to kind of summarize my testimony a little bit. Um, so Brother Fabian's son, uh, L Little Fabian is actually, he's actually the one that, you know, brought me in the church. We're... I like how he goes, Little Fabian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not so little, Little Fabian. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so he, I mean, me and him, we were best friends from middle school all the way into high school. And he eventually one day decided to, um, Gave his life to God. He started to devote himself to the church, and um, one day he just decided to take the leap of faith, and you know, decided to inv invite me to the church as well. And which really, like it, it kind of ended up working out. Um, it was it was kind of neat the way it all worked out because I remember uh, years ago, like um, I, I used to live right here, right right around the corner from the church. And I used to pass by this church on a daily basis. And I, I never noticed it, you know, there was, I don't know, I felt like it was just so normal for me to walk past it. My bus stop used to be right across the street. And I, I never really paid any attention to it. Um, and I still remember one time, um, I haven't told very many people about this, but um, there's one time, there was a, a hole that was in the back fence. And me and a couple of my friends ended up crawling through that hole and we walked, we took a little shortcut through the actual church property and we walked through right there and hopped that, that wooden fence, walked through and we went out the front gate. <laughs> that was a few years ago. Yeah. I, trespassing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. A little, I was already drawing. <laughs> little did I know it's going to be my, my future home right here. <laughs> yeah, but God, God really... He he really reached in and grabbed me at a time that I I really needed it. Um, I was really lost and my mind was not in a very good place. Um, no, without going too much into detail, it um, basically right before I had came to church, right before Little Fabian had reached out to me, I had gone to the point where um, I tried taking my own life and. Um, little Fabian like I, I never even told him about that and like at that at that time and it just so happened that you know God obviously God made it fail <laughs> and he was able to stop it and just you know two three months later that's when little Fabian invited me to church and I was like hey you know what like maybe maybe I'll give it a shot and so that that's the reason why I decided to come to the church and just instantly fell in love with it <laughs> and Amen. been here ever since ever since huh yeah god's really an on-time god yeah you know uh you, you probably look back and see yourself as a young person and no one probably knew what you were going through what was in your mind you know in your heart but god knew you know god knew god strategically placed you i mean you literally literally live maybe three or four houses down right on the <laughs> corner of uh 
on the Inuba yeah. ranch over here. And so it's amazing. It's, nothing happens by chance. Yeah. <laughs> nothing happens by chance. I remember uh, probably meeting you for the first time when we were going to that Bakersfield conference. I forget which conference it was. It was an act. Oh, yeah. Bishop Holmes preached. Mm -hmm. right? yeah, yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember um, I wasn't in church yet, but I know at that moment, God was dealing with me. God was dealing with you. He was dealing with little Fabian uh, and Alyssa, a whole bunch, you know, God was just working and, and none of that happened by chance. Yeah. yeah. Now, fast forward, how many years ago was that? I, I want to say five years ago, maybe? Five years ago. Huh? Yeah, four or five years ago. Yeah. So five years ago, now serving God. But before we jump to current times, what was life like as, I guess, a new baby in Christ? Talk about some of the, I mean, you could talk about maybe some of the ups and downs you faced. Um, when I look at Brother Abel, I see a consistent young man. Uh, a lot of times we not might, we may not feel consistent. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like we're just on a roller coaster, you know, but I, I when I know a lot of other CEO. I see a consistent young man who just, just you know, keeps on keeping on. You know, so talk a little bit about that. How is it like as a young person serving God? <clears throat> um, I I feel like it, it really, really was, obviously a challenge. Um, you know, my um not having my like my my parents come with me like in a way first coming i felt like i was i was kind of on my own but then eventually you know building relationships within, within the church you start to meet like a lot of um a lot of older people and um you know like the the gomez has been you and you guys being some of them you know that stepped in and really like took me under your guys's wings and um pastor and sister marianne you know um brother rick brother Baloo, like they, they were always like you know huge influences on me and um that was one thing that when i first came to when i first came here i seen all the i seen all the different people but they all you know had one thing in common and it was that they you know they were different like they you know that they were they were holy <laughs> And that, that was one thing that really stood out to me. And I was like, hey, you know what? Like me first coming, I was like, you know, I, I want I want to be like that one day, you know. Um, obviously, I was way far away from that. And in the back of my mind, it was always there. And I was like, I'll, I'll, ne I'll never be like that, you know. But I just, you know, just stayed faithful and just kept kept pushing through, you know, even at, at a lot of times at my lowest points, I still kept, you know, trying to push through and I would, re I would reach out to you know, some of the older guys. And um, I know there was various times where I was going through something and I would, you know, shoot uh, like Brother Rick or Brother Julio. I would shoot someone a text and be like, hey, you know, can you guys um, can you guys come to the church and, you know, pray with me and stuff. Um, and so, the, you know, it was like even at my lowest points, I was still like, hey, you know what? Well, I'm still living a better life than I was out there in the world, you know, yeah. and I, di I didn't feel so. I didn't feel that burden. I still, in a way, felt like, uh, I don't really know how to describe it, but I, I still felt, even on my worst days in the church, it was still better than my best days out in the world. You know, all the partying and all that, like it was, you know, waking up the next day and you don't even know what happened the night before. Like, yeah, it was just, it was not a good feeling at all. <laughs> Amen. So developing those relationships was very important to me. Yeah babe in Christ, someone new in the church. And like you said, it wasn't just one person that helped you. It wasn't just one family, but the church as a collective body doing what the church does best, yeah. right? You mentioned multiple people and it's just, you know, the church being the church. And it's, I guess, important for us to remember that when a new babe in Christ comes to the, you know, to the church for the first time or the second or third time, or God fills them with the Holy Ghost, that's not the end. That is just them getting the their first foot in the kingdom of God. And now it's at Acts 2 and 42. And now they continue steadfastly. Yeah. But it's important to have those relationships, right? And the breaking of bread and prayers and fellowship. And that's about people. That's about developing relationships. Because I, we could come to the church and just be isolated. But that's not the will of God right there. Yeah. We need people. You're talking about shooting some text messages, you know, about 
needing words of encouragement. I think we all kind of mm-hmm. need that at times. And so how, how was it, how important was it, uh, maybe the youth group and, and joining with the youth group and, and having other young people your age now with that same mindset, not the mindset of the world, you know, that, that past, right? That past mm-hmm. connection is now a disconnection, right? But now you're yeah. connected with, the, with the, the saints of God and the young people. How important was that? That was very, very crucial um, as far as helping me change as a person. Um, you know, like I know it's it's heavily, um, how do you say it, like um, heavily encouraged um, to surround yourself by like-minded people. And um, that was something that I, I realized early on um, with, I know Brother, Brother Bethel was our, he was our youth leader when we, when I first came into the church and he was, you know, he was constantly hosting like youth events. We, we would always be here, you know, playing volleyball. We'd be um, playing just different sports. We'd be coming, having devotion, stuff like that. And, you know, uh, just being surrounded by, you know, just positive people. Um, it, it really, it really helped me to, to change the person that I am, you know, and it helped me to censor myself in a way. Like I was, I would try my best not to let my attitude, you know, show. And I would try my best not to, you know, use words that we don't use in the church. Um, uh, right now that I'm talking about attitudes, it, it kind of reminded me of, um, there's one time that we were playing volleyball out front. And you know it, it, get, it gets pretty competitive, and <laughs> really, I didn't know. That. <laughs> yeah, no, it sure really does. <laughs> yeah, so um, brother Andrew, um, Andrew Parks, pastor's son, he he's very competitive. Yeah, and he 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 can run his mouth. <laughs> he's he like he likes to hype it up. You know, he likes to make it interesting. And um, um brother Andrew, this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've I've told him this story before. He just he he laughs about it. He's I mean I, I love brother Andrew, um, but yeah, I remember there was one time he just he he spiked on me, and I I was just kind of like oh, man, and I was you know only maybe a, a month or two in the, into the church, and he he got up in my face, started telling me stuff, and I was like okay, you know it's it's fine, it's fine, like you know. <laughs> And I kind of tried tried keeping my composure, and he did it like constantly, like over and over again. And in a way, I was kind of like I, I let my I kind of let my anger build up, but then in a way too, like I know Brother Bethel kind of helped me calm down. Brother Bethel and Brother Fabian helped me calm down in the end. So now it's just a story that you know me and me and Angie like talk about. We just we just laugh about it now because it's like when I first got in church, like I, you know, I I don't know. I just it just needs to work on. Yeah, you know, a lot of times we. We, you know, we received the gift of the Holy Ghost. But they just we just had a Bible study in elements right now that talks about the fruit of the spirit, the the nine different attributes, and and how we exercise those attributes. Right, we exercise mm-hmm. peace and temperance and long suffering, you know, yeah, things like that. Where we put into action those things, and and we really let um our new selves kind of come to the forefront and show. You know, I know I I dealt with a lot of things like that. And I know a lot of people listening. Um, we have dealt with that and guess what? We continue to deal with a lot of those things, right? Always trying to improve upon our character and our personality and things like that. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure you're not the only one. You know? So <laughs> yeah, it's crucial, right? Being a part of a, a youth group. Yeah. Relationships, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I know that that's, that's one thing that we've, um, you know, as being a, a, a youth leader, that's one thing that we, we try to, we try to do as well is, um, try to keep a consistent, uh, like consistent hangouts, you know, um, whether it's with youth, with youth nights, when we, we go out and, you know, just let, let, let the kids have fun. But as, um, uh, at the same time, you know, we try to be like the, the spiritual leaders for them. Um, try to, you know, be, be an example for them at the same time. And I know even um, not not on church days, like sometimes, like right now, everybody's in the pickleball, you know, so we, yeah. we all get together and we go, like we all go play pickleball together. So it's like we're, you know, always, always with each other, always looking out yeah. for each other. Cohesive team. Yeah. So you're a youth leader. So that's action youth, right? Action yeah. Youth. And so, so that's been pretty good. So you served there in that area. So we'll jump to ministry uh really quickly um when you hear the word ministry what what does ministry mean to you as someone might be listening right now maybe a young person it's like well i want to be a minister so i want to minister and i want to join ministry what what is what is that 
<clears throat> to me, ministry is um, ministry is more of serving for me. It's um, you know, obviously, it's something that I I don't take lightly at all. Whether it's from you know from playing the drums to doing the sounds to, I mean, uh, being an usher, it's like everything is all for God, you know. Um, and I I try to do it all to the best of my abilities, you know, what whatever the whatever the different, you know, tasks that I'm doing, I, I try to do it to the best of my abilities because it's not, it's, I'm not doing it for myself, but I'm doing it for God. Therefore, I want to give it my, I want to give it my all, give it my best, uh, which one, one that does, you know, push me to do that a lot more is sound because, um, uh, obviously we're, we're, we're still learning, you know, it's technology is just constantly, constantly changing, constantly keeping up with all, all the new stuff that's coming up, you know, you're constantly dealing with frequencies, all that. And so I feel like with sound, you know, it really keeps me on my toes. Um, and I, I want to do it uh, to the best of my abilities, you know, like I said. And so it's like I find myself constantly uh, watching YouTube videos, you know, uh, reading articles on uh, what what different stuff you do. Yourself with information. Yeah. And, and that's come to the church and flip a switch. And there you go. <laughs> I know this stuff. Yeah. Extra work that goes in. Yeah. It's it's uh, all the all the behind the scenes stuff that. You know, you're just con constantly learning, and like you said, you know, constantly like feeding, feeding myself. Um, where when I come here, you know, I can um, kind of not perfect it, but I can do it to the best of my abilities, you know, and um, keep the keep the spirit, the spirit of the service going, and keep the, you know, the spirit of the Holy Ghost moving. A lot of thinking on your feet, a lot of troubleshooting really quick, right? How's that like? Is that pretty high stress sometimes? It, it it really can be. I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, it's there. There's been times when I'm, you know, speakers start giving feedback all of a sudden and you're just constantly on your toes, you know, it's like, turn around and look at you. yeah, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> It could be, be one little ring, and all of a sudden, you know, like you said, everyone turns around and like looks, and you're just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, we were talking but, Sister Lily last time, and says that's the only time, you know, we look back at the sound person when when it <laughs> squeaks or something, there's feedback, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, nope. You know, you just <laughs> back then. That's that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be pretty tough sometimes. So, you're a youth leader. Uh, you're on the sound team. Talked about some of the challenges there. Um. But, uh, you know, Brother Abel always sells himself short. You operate in a lot of other diff different areas, too. You're also um, uh, one of the teachers or helpers in BLAST. Talk about that. So you're in kids' youth ministry with Action Youth, but also BLAST ministry. How's that been? It's, it's, been, it's been really, really good. Um, I've, because I'm always, you know, um, because I'm always busy, like um, during service, I haven't gone to go back there as much as other people. Um, I think I, as of right now, I've only been able to go back there two times, which this, this Sunday is going to be my third, you know, my, my third time being back there. Um, but I mean, just a couple of times that I've been back there, it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing, you know, because it's like, seeing these little kids at a young age, you know, getting to experience like something that I, I didn't get to experience, you know, so it's like, um, and being able to be a part of that, you know, um, where, you know, being able to break it down. And like, w when I read the stories, uh, like, I know the the last one that I taught on was, um, it was on um, the demon possessed man or the the legion. So um, are you quick? So are you giving like the, the main <laughs> story for this last service or how does that work yeah so um I, I was giving the actual the actual lesson for that day for the day okay, yeah gotcha. yeah so it was on it was on the um the legion you know the man with um many many spirits inside of him and so that that one was a tough one when um sister tina had asked me or when she had gave me the paper and told me that I was speaking on Legion, I was like, well, how do I, you know, break that down for kids, you know? And <laughs> yeah, so it's like, you know, you're trying to teach them about spirits without scaring them. And you're trying to break it down to uh, bring it down to a level where they can comprehend it, you know? So I know like um, 
when I was talking, when I was talking about it, I just kind of explained him as a wild man, you know, a man that was running around, you know, screaming, yelling, and, um, you know, the, the people that they didn't want him inside of the city and they were, you know, scared of him. They would try to hold him down, but he was, I described him as like a strong man. So he was like, he was wild and they couldn't control him, um, until, you know, until Jesus came and then the wild man, you know, went and bowed before him and um you know cried out to him and you seen jesus move on him and um the way that i described it when jesus um demanded the the spirits to flee from him um you know it talks about swine in there so i kind of just broke it down and i was like okay well as as i read the scripture i told them i was like okay you know well who, who knows what a swine is because it's like they're they're little kids you know <laughs> came home and yeah so learned about that <laughs> talked about it so it impacted them yeah yeah, so it was like it was it's really neat, you know, breaking it down and uh being able to um you know, bring bring it down to their level and teach it to them and it, it honestly it helped it helped me to grow as well. Um helped me to put together, you know, a like a a different kind of like lesson, a different kind of Bible study and it really like pushed me out of my comfort zone in a way, you know. It's really good cuz you know, you teach and blast, you teach in elements as well. Right, so those are two different age demographics. You got eight yeah. four through twelve with blast, and then you have uh, anywhere I know we get kiddos sometimes in in elements, and all the way up to adulthood. Mm -hmm. So house preparation different between blast and elements when you're Bible study teaching. What what's the difference there? Um, I've and yeah, with elements, it's uh um, I tend to go a whole lot more in depth you know as um for one being we have you know more, more time where it says you know we try to do it with within the hour uh, i think my lessons have gone about uh, approximately like 40 45 minutes um and it's just it's it's a whole lot more in depth you know once when you read it it's like you read the story that they give you but at the same time you know you hop hop to a different story and you start you know grabbing all these different pieces and bringing them all together and writing them into a lesson to you know give them the um the full the full aspect of, of what you're you know what you're teaching on and it's um maintaining that flow yeah having a good flow which mm -hmm. is yeah. yeah so then so blast elements but also pulpit and <laughs> preaching How, how's that been <clears throat> yeah that's uh it's been it's been nerve-wracking but um uh it's 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 been really different and it's been really just a, a really good experience um the the past past couple of times that i've you know spoke i felt like it was like at first, like I was kind of like, okay, well, like what, you know, what am I going to speak on? Like I was kind of, uh, obviously I wanted, I wanted to be in the will of God and I, I prayed about it. And, you know, both times like God gave me, he, he gave me a message. Um, and I, I was like, okay, you know, well, if this, if this is what I feel, I went, you know, uh, did a study on it and then eventually I'll get confirmation. And so then I was like, okay, you know, so God, okay, this is what I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. And, I'm trusting that you're going to, you know, that you're going to move, um, because I know for, for me, one thing that, um, one thing that I, I kind of put upon myself is like, okay, well, I'm speaking to people that have been in it longer than I have. Mm -hmm. And which is something that I, I really had to work on, you know? So it's like, um, I was like, okay, like, well, how, how do I teach people that have been in it their whole lives, you know? Um, but then uh, eventually like as, as you pray, you know, as you fast and put together the messages and God just, he, ha he has a way of just, you know, um, putting it all together and, you know, helping you get that, get that steady flow, uh, being able to apply the stories to, um, you know, like, um, I know the last time I had got a story of, uh, Desmond Doss and I was able to, you know, bring that in and kind of correlate it to scripture. And so it, um, definitely a, di a different different kind of experience yeah an example that people might be familiar with I mean, yeah one of them is Axel Ridge yeah I remember learning about that in, in school and um that, yeah, that was an awesome message that was really impactful but it, it's it's amazing to see God using you in different areas you know action youth and blast and elements teacher and sound team and uh preaching from the pulpit scripture reading right also mm -hmm. drums yeah how, how did how did that come about uh, were you always a musician 
uh yeah so um i was uh uh i guess i would say i started becoming a musician um in high school uh, not high school in middle school uh when i when i met um you know L little fabian we we met through band in in middle school and i i actually started off with the saxophone and that that's what introduced me into music okay. but you know i'm like still to this day like i still i still love the saxophone but um you know learning music at a, at a young age helped me when i came you know in, into church um actually when, when i first started um when i first started i guess when i first joined the music at the church I wasn't even, I didn't even plan on doing drums. I actually want to learn the piano. Oh. <laughs> and um, so we had um, the, the Chavez's were here. It was uh, Brother Chavez and Sister Chavez. Sister Chavez was helping, uh, was helping with piano lessons. And um, I, I, that was one thing that I had told her. I was like, hey, I was like, I, I, could, I want to learn how to play the piano. You know, that, yeah. that'd, be, that'd be pretty neat to learn. And then she, um, it, eventually things just ended up falling into place. And, you know, I ended up behind the drum kit. Uh, which it ended up working out, you know. I um I know at at a young age at the um the church that I used to go to uh, when when I was smaller, I remember always watching the drummer, and I was always like, man, like that that'd be so cool, you know, to be able to play the drums like that. Like, um, and I know I was I was in drumline for a little bit in um in middle school, and I eventually, you know, like strayed away from it, but eventually, you know, I ended up coming back into it you know god god orchestrated it somehow and eventually put me up on you know put me up on the drums and he gave you a talent put it to use right yeah look i can give you a talent and you not work on that talent and you kind of just put it away and not really mm -hmm. use it so what has practice time been like and how did you develop those skills over time because you just not overnight just learned to play the drums yeah was that putting time and effort into it yeah it really is it's a, a a lot of uh a lot of practice that that you know uh got me to where i am today um c compared to w when we first started it's uh hours and hours of practice you know there's um a few services you know where you, you've like I, I know there's been a couple times when i've played to the point like we'll, um, we've played just about like two hours and by the end of the service like i you know i've had like um blood on my drumsticks before like it's just like con constantly yeah. playing constantly practicing but it's it's all muscle memory you know you you do it and after a while it's it just becomes it just becomes natural you know you just start to flow and you just start to feel the music and from when i from when i first started to now i feel like um i'm, I'm a lot more comfortable now um and to now like I, I find myself you know sometimes during um during worship service during altar call where I'll, I'll i'll start feeling the spirit you know and um um th there's been times when i've played when i've been playing and then all of a sudden you know like i just feel like a like um i guess just like a, a burden like i'll start you know speaking in tongues but i'm still like i'm still playing but it's like it's like like god just takes over you know uh it's it's just it's it's really neat, you know, how God moves and moves in different areas. It's powerful, powerful. You said you even have battle scars. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got yeah, got one that I'm still recovering from right now. <laughs> battle scars right. from, from the plane, and you know, I know we we love and appreciate you in all the different areas uh, that you've served. Also, I mean, you you've uh, helped pastor and in, in the church on days where we're doing out outdoor work. Right, even even maintenance. Talk a little mm -hmm. bit about how that's just as important as pulpit work. Yeah, to work elements class. Talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. That that was one thing. Uh, when I when I first came into church, it was um, I was like, I I wanted to do stuff in like in the kingdom of God, like um, how do you say it? like in in the house of God? I wanted to do you know whether I I knew that pastor needed help, you know cut it cutting the grass and so i was like hey pastor you know like um like could, could you show me how to work the lawnmower and like a you know eventually it just you get the, you know you get the hang of it so yeah <laughs> yeah so it, it took a um I don't know, I guess it, it took me going forward, you know, asking them like hey you know can you can you teach me how to use the the lawnmower and then um 
he eventually taught me how to use the big tractor where you would go out there and you know drag the field different stuff like that i know when uh when we were remodeling the sanctuary i made it a point to you know try and be here as as much as possible um as i would get off of work uh you know long day paving but as, as soon as i got off i went it's not, not a good habit but i would go you know grab me an energy drink <laughs> and um yeah, I would just, you know, show up to church and I was just, I was just ready to get to work. It was just, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of work that's gone into, you know, um, a lot of behind the scenes work that I, you know, made it a point to establish um, right before, because I always put, I always put the, um, I, I consider that a ministry, you know, uh, doing, mm -hmm. doing work around around the house of god i consider that to me personally that is um that's like just for, for me i feel like that's my most important ministry you know is um obviously doing stuff around around the house of god and that's something that i i, I really do uh to the best of my abilities amen yeah and that's that's really important uh, being available <laughs> taking initiative uh, understanding that there's many different areas here at the church where we can serve. Uh, sometimes you might be tired, but things still have to get done. Um, you know, pastor's not a one-man team. You know, it, ta it takes a village. Uh, like they say, sometimes the saying goes, it takes a, it really does take a village to, to keep the church clean, beautiful, inside and out, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, so many different areas. You know, a lot of people might not even realize that you serve. And again, this is not, this podcast is not intended to pat ourselves on the back. Yeah. You know, this podcast is really for, uh, it's, it's for the glory of God. Look what God has done. Look where we used to be. Look at how we've fought through certain things with God by our side. And God has brought us to a place in, in, in time in our lives where uh, we can be kingdom workers, right? We're not everything we ought to be. Right, mm -hmm. like we always say, but thanks to God, we're not what we used, we used to be. To be. Yeah. Like we say that all the time, but it's so true. And, and being available for the kingdom of God, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, if you want to learn an instrument, go ask, right? Or or, or get some lessons. Uh, if you want to help with your work, hey, Pastor, I'm I'm free such and such a day. Um, can I get a paintbrush and some paint? You know, like I can paint the trim around the doors or whatever the case may be. Or yeah, I get the carpet. Um, that's an important ministry. And kind of you're saying that ministry is probably more important to you than some of the others, you know, but, but they're all important, right? Yeah. All important. And so is there something, I guess, I mean, um, you're still very young, right? <laughs> uh, even though sometimes you said your body doesn't feel like that. <laughs> yeah, <that's a> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Definitely my body feels it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but are, is there some other areas, maybe in other areas of ministry that you're kind of like, maybe I'd like to do that someday? Um, yeah, I don't... <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I would definitely love to, you know, learn, uh, like other, other instruments. And I, I know one that's always caught my attention is the, you know, the bass guitar. I've, I've always, I've always wanted to learn the bass guitar. It's, I've, to me, it's like really like a, it's a strong instrument, you know, it's yeah. one of the, it's one of the, the backbone instruments, yes. yeah. um, to, to the music. That would be one thing that I really, you know, would like to, would like to pick up later on. Learn the bass. Yeah. And so I, I, you really touched on a whole bunch of different things, but if we got some young people listening today and maybe they're just thinking about ministry and thinking about serving and, and, and they're getting a little older and you know what, I want to get my hands dirty in the kingdom of God. Uh, what advice would you give them starting off? Um, uh, I guess I would say, you know, like, like the way that you were kind of, you know, emphasizing it, make yourself available, um, you know, make sure that you make time for, you know, the work in, in the kingdom of God, work inside of the house of God. Um, I know it's, it's been, you know, you're just, you're, you're constantly busy. Um, whether it's inside of the church or outside of the church, you know, I know, um, which obviously, you know, like we said earlier, it's, it's like, it's, it's not a pat on the back, but, um, like I've, I, I learned eventually to make, to build my schedule around church, you know, to build my schedule around, uh, around the, the spirit, you know, the spiritual aspect of my life. Um, and, you know, I, I decided to, 
for for me personally what i found that worked out was to free up the, the middle of the day um because i know for a while i was i was um go, going to the gym after work and um so eventually what i did um because i felt like i wasn't putting in uh as much time spiritually you know for my, my spiritual my spiritual self and so i ended up switching it up and i i switched that to the morning uh, right before work and so that was like it was kind of like a it was a in a way a kind of a sacrifice for me but it you know freed up the whole middle of the day from like 3 30 to you know six o'clock seven o'clock now i have all that extra free time you know if i want to come to the church to pray like if i want to um you know just go to a coffee shop and study um i, I learned to build my schedule around um around the the kingdom of god you know around the spiritual stuff to find that balance though. yeah you know finding that balance like you said does take some sacrifice sometimes yeah right just like fasting does mm -hmm. okay, fasting there's a sacrifice we're giving something up um uh, for spiritual reasons but even finding time to do something in the kingdom of god might take some sacrifice on our part mm -hmm. because if we don't we're always going to find a reason to not do it right it's, yeah it's just the reality of life sometimes um uh, well if if a, B, and C align just perfectly, then I'll do it. Mm -hmm. but maybe A, B, and C won't always line up, right? So we just got to maybe move A out of the way and B out of the way. And all right, <laughs> I'm just going to do something for the kingdom of God, right? Yeah. And, and next you know it, we find time to do things. I remember before um, I even got back into church and, um, thinking, my goodness, I'm so occupied here in my life right now. Even if I decided to go back to church, uh, I would have no time. So I got this going on, this going on, this going on, you know, all these different things. Like, there's no way I'd have time for God. Mm -hmm. Now it's the complete opposite. I'm like, I don't have time for anything else. Just, <laughs> you know, uh, try, try to be kingdom minded, you know, uh, family balance, find this balance in my life. But it's amazing how God would just change things around, right? Yeah. When, when you make yourself available and you have the desire. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I know uh, one, one huge thing as well that has helped me to kind of, you know, um, I, I guess it's, it's helped me in like different areas um all together is our, our our wednesday night classes that we've been having with pastor you know um he he breaks it down and a lot of times we come and we you know we just sit there and pastor just you know he just spits out wisdom to us you know whether it's from um you know being behind the pulpit or whether it's you know just um serving like um serving in different areas whether it's just you know doing doing stuff around the house of god and um you know helping us to be able to grow spiritually like all those different aspects and he he helps us you know sometimes we'll tell him like whoa like i know when we when we first when he first started up the class we were like well how do you know how do we find a balance and he he kind of helped us and showed us um you know how how to balance out our lives and he he really has he really has helped um i i know for me personally he has helped me a lot to, to grow in in my in the spiritual aspect of my life amen with those amen. wednesday night classes well, that's that's awesome well we know we love and appreciate you ftc loves and appreciate brother abel and all the different areas and and i think some people sometimes people don't realize like oh goodness you serve in all these different areas you know um uh, it, it's encouraging maybe it'll be encouraging to someone to say well i'd like to start serving too you know i want to make some time for the things of god and and so i i pray and hope that someone today listening in is encouraged uh, by brother abel's testimony and, and uh you know taking the time to share with us all the areas of ministry that you serve in what mm -hmm. ministry means to you right uh, the importance of being available and, and having a desire and making time for god and so mm -hmm. we hope that you guys enjoyed this podcast episode i know i enjoyed it it was a blessing to have brother abel on this evening thank you brother abel for being with us mm -hmm. uh, thank you guys for being with us again uh, we hope you enjoyed it and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys uh, next time on our next uh, ministry central podcast god bless you guys uh, have a great evening